You're listening to the Black Eagles podcast. Welcome back, everybody. This is episode 231 of the Black Eagles podcast. I am, of course, your host, Sinan Shorty, live from New York City, uh, where the summer is upon us, warm weather, good vibes all around, just like we have in our best touch camp these days. Season's over. We can just dump that whole thing in the garbage and look forward from here. Uh, and, and to commemorate that fact, and to help me both review this previous season, which is finally, finally finished, and look forward to the, to the one coming up, and talk a little bit about what's going on during this transfer window, and all the exciting news that we can look forward to, with me is a, a very special co-host, returnee, Mr. Aaron Armstrong, everybody. Yo, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's good, people? How you doing, sir? It's great to have you back. Yeah. It's been a long yeah, time. Yeah. It's always nice to be back, man. Like, uh, I enjoy doing these podcasts. <laughs> I really uh, like like them, uh, like listening to them as well. So it feels great to be here again. Like, I don't get the time to just participate and, like, help you out with it or host it. But, like, when Maybe I get that chance, was... it's always a big pleasure. Maybe that was the curse of this last season. I don't think we, had to be, we didn't have you on, so maybe that's why we need we need to rectify this. But no, it's great why to have you not? back. It's great to have yeah, you man, back. It's good to be back again. Uh, looking forward to this episode. Uh, we can finally like argue about what what wrong for us and <laughs> kind yeah, of right. just yeah, forget exactly. about it. As of right now. Yeah, and I, I wonder how much arguing there will be, or, or agreeing, you know, I mean, I, I, there are quite a few narratives going out, of course, in our fan base, um, a lot of blame being sort of shifted to in various camps, and so we'll obviously get to talk about that briefly, but so yeah, I mean, that's actually a perfect jumping off point, and I think we could just jump right in, there's no, um, you know, match to talk about, there's no real news either, and we'll talk about rumors as we talk about the next phase of this episode, which is going to be where we talk about what's going on next season and what we need to do in the summer. Because I think a lot of that ties into the rumors out there, obviously. But, but so, yeah, real quick, Aaron, like since we haven't seen you for a while, tell me a little bit about what the heck went wrong <laughs> this year. Well, what was um, that? It's, what was it's that? It's hard to say, you know? It's hard to say. You can't just, like say a single thing uh, yeah, yeah. about the right? yeah. problems we've had um, but I think uh, our main like, most serious problem was that like we kind of like went into the season with such high hopes and like we were so gassed uh, the signings were like pretty impressive on paper yeah. and we, yeah, we had the like uh, cheap players from that last season uh, staying with us uh, and also, like the biggest thing, perhaps in the beginning of the season, we managed to retain Sagan. Uh, was pretty much like uh, the Turkish <laughs> Pep Guardiola last season. <laughs> yeah, that's what we thought. We thought. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that's what we thought. We were like, okay, we found our next Sir Alex Ferguson or whatever you want to put it. Like we were sh- like so sure that like, this guy would be staying with us for like a couple of years. Yeah. So we went to this season with that mindset and that with that approach and initially like I can't lie like the first few games bro like I don't know if you remember but like our stats uh, I'm talking about our stats like we were so impressive in those wins like our yeah, defense yeah. was impeccable yeah uh, like we didn't concede any goals uh, we were always like managing to win somehow uh, and like we were just so thrilled to be in the Champions League as well so for, for the first few games of the season like especially like against Reason Sport uh, okay, Gaziantep game, that was a bit of, bit of a disappointment, but like we had some unfortunate stuff happening in that game and Sakala had that 
That was the um, injury match, yeah. Yeah. That sucked. That sucked. Like that, he, he kind of suffered from a heat stroke or something like that. I don't know like what to call that exactly, but like it was definitely yeah. because of that Gaziantep heat. Um, then we faced Kara Gimrick. We won it with 10 men. Then we had Reina Malatia, which was an easy win for us. Okay, we lost to Dortmund, but that game was um, pretty impressive for us. I mean, we, we didn't have like... Yeah, okay, there we was kind, really... kind of had that belief that we would be able to win because like Waterfall Park, like in those Champions League games, turns into a fortress, right? Yeah, and we and, were like, down quite a few men, right? Like we had quite a few injuries already by yeah, then. Yeah, we, we we had some people out. Uh, we that's when the some... injury bug hit, I think. Honestly, yeah, it started hitting around that era. Okay, that's another thing. Like, actually, I actually completely forgot about that. Like, yeah, remember we had become... fourteen men out, and like I had for me, that's I, I don't, I I can't, you know claim to be a uh, fan of, of the game in all corners of the world or anything like you know I've, I've always been very focused on Besiktas to be honest but mm-hmm. like I've never seen 14 guys out at a single time yeah that's crazy man. That's, like that's, I've never seen that's, that that's highly unusual and like quite unlucky honestly like if a team like suffers that many injuries uh, they'll have a hard time and whether it's like City even like doesn't matter how deep your squad is like you, you'll have some problems yeah, and uh, I think nine of them were starters. Yeah, <laughs> we were down yeah, to two. Yeah, yeah, like we had like, it was crazy. Hard, that was like a wild... Pjanic all out at the same time. It was like miserable. Yeah. I... So bad. And then like, okay, like uh, talking about, about the fixtures again. Uh, so we had that like Dortmund game in which we lost. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we didn't uh, necessarily play bad, but like we uh, kind of like, lacked in some areas. And like, it wasn't a, that much of a big deal at that time. And then, like, we won against Antalya's for a great comeback. And the most disappointing game of the season, if you ask me personally, uh, that 3-3 draw against Adana Demirspor, which was a highly controversial game. Oh, was, like, that was the turning point, wasn't it? Calls. Yeah, yeah, I would say I was just going to get to that. Like, it was uh. the turning point of the season for us. We drew that game, and suddenly, boom, like... Everything started going downhill for us after that game. You know what? Uh, Actually, let me quickly put an asterisk right there, and that's a perfect. I, I'm sure you've seen this um, little infographic sort of, sort of uh, move around the the Besiktas Twitterverse. But did you see? How, like, so they've calculated how many points were lost and won based on referee errors, and they put mm-hmm. out a little thing. And Besiktas had lost 17 points because of referee yeah. errors. And we'd gained something like three, you know? I mean, it was, it was, when you do all the math, we would have been in second place if you took away all those errors. Yeah, I mean, uh, those, stats, those, those stats are, I mean. They're questionable, they, no they, doubt. They, they, they certainly have a point, but like, uh, they're also quite speculative and of like, course, kind of, of like course. drags you away from the point. Of course, uh, and you I never mean, know, like, let's say a, a referee's error doesn't stand and like a goal is scored or is taken off the board you still never know what happens in the next you yeah, know yeah. five <laughs> ten minutes right yeah. so yeah, of course it's quite speculative yeah. but Don't nonetheless nonetheless though when you compare that to all of the other teams it's very clear that we are i don't i'm i don't want to say that there's a conspiracy just for the sake of not being that guy but like for anyone out there who is saying <laughs> that <laughs> for anyone out there who's saying it there's no doubt that like you know, I, I don't know if the if there's not a conspiracy, you know, if the majority of referees are like wealthy kids, you know, who had a, a nice upbringing or something, and that's why they, <laughs> you know, happen to be Galatasaray or, or Fener fans or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, if there's a political, you know, there's lots of speculation about this title season, uh, you know, uh, Erdogan's final year and all of that. That's, that okay. We're not going to touch politics, I promise. But uh, it might have, it might some, it might have some effect. Like politics might have, it might have some effect. But I genuinely think that the reason that we see such bad officiating in the Super League is because all referees are just. Uh, terrible. I want to say sh- but yeah, I mean, like, no, sorry, you fine. can just bleep it out. <laughs> no, there, yeah, it's, it, it, occasionally, I mean, if any, if there's ever a reason to need the bleeper, it's talking about Turkish referees. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the all-time, like, inept job performances. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean. Oh, uh, yeah, no, but so anyway. Well, but yeah. so back to Adana Demir. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do too much of that. I just, it was a news item, I thought, you know, that was making the rounds. <laughs> Um, but so go on, Adana Demir, the turning point, right? 
Yeah, and I was gonna get to that point, like where I first started talking um, uh, about high hopes. Like that game kind of like had this major like psychological effect on the team and the fan base as well. Uh, that we kind of stopped believing after that, like with the injuries and everything just like accumulating. I think uh, that game was the like nail in the coffin in that aspect for me. And then like, and then like right after that game, we lost to Altai. We relegated, by the way, like, <laughs> it was probably yeah. made one of the highlights, like, the, the biggest highlight of their season, like, beating us. Oh, lost that man. game, and we went yeah. to See, that was it. Away. It was the turning point. And especially yeah. the way we lost to Adana Demir with, with the Balotelli, like, hating Sergen Yalcin coming out, you know, this oh, whole yeah, story. That, that's that's Remember? like, that, that, uh, that kind of, yeah, that definitely had an effect, bro, like, caused, like, shockwaves in the media and all that. Definitely had an effect. Don't get me wrong, it was like sweet <laughs> bad for us. I can't lie. I was like so so livid after that game, obviously, for like once you could think about like what happened that game. Like you should have won it still, but like yeah, nevertheless, like it's the problem. Like you have to know when to bounce back and how to bounce back. We didn't able And to even do that. how to how to bounce we back to. against the media, right? Like when when this whole narrative comes out and people are jumping out, right? Like You've got to be able to shut that out as a, as a as an organization, and perhaps we failed in that regard too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Anyway, sorry, I keep jumping in, but yeah, go on. Yeah, don't worry about it, man. Like if you have comments, just go for it. This is <laughs> this is your this is your show. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, like we kind of like lost a lot of games around that time. Like uh, I think our, at, at a certain point, our only win was that game against Galatasaray, which was a big win, but still like quite disappointing if you look at the big picture yeah i mean the uh, nose dive was certainly i think once the champions league season like went into effect um i remember like late october november was like the doom spiral right like i think by the end of november sergan was out because it just yeah yeah november and december man like those two months like just <laughs> disaster <laughs> it is hard yeah it was disastrous anyway uh yeah, yeah, like, like just like you mentioned, like Sagan got sacked, and we kind of went into this like uh, period where we just not able to like make good decisions as a club. Like it was like bad decision after another. Uh, it was like initially, if you ask me, first of all, I mean, that Caravelli really should have been a standing manager. Just that, like, just an interim manager. Yeah, like care caretaker one. Um, but we kind of got emotional there, and like maybe he's the savior. <laughs> yeah, like That's he's right. like he's no, and he's and, like and for the record, by the way, like, my whole like, hashtag Caravelli season thing was was a joke. Yeah, it was banter. <laughs> like you know, for me, he was very much an interim manager. Um, but sorry, yeah. I'll, I'll step in later because I'll, I'll probably have a slightly yeah. different take on this than you but uh, for the most part no doubt like I, we were not decisive you could say that much but yeah, like we romant yeah sorry, sorry go ahead. Ahead. no no you go you go <laughs> yeah, you go like, we're, we're genuinely romantic fans like as Besiktas fans we, we, we're like super romantic so we we saw that guy like crying on tv after a win mm -hmm. and like getting all like passionate and like emotional in his like post game uh, interviews uh, I kind of got like affected by that thing as well. I think at, at a certain point, like like in the in the beginning, I was against him, and af after those like wins, like which we played like really passionately, and like my guy like just moving there, like saying all these like beautiful stuff, saying all that beautiful stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, about... okay, okay, maybe, 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 maybe we can just like keep this guy in, like and see what happens, like you know, like. I think he deserves a chance. At a certain point, I was thinking like that. Yeah, I mean, it's worth you? noting he was like all about. Uh, I'm a, I'm a product of Besiktas, the, the organization. Yeah, we're gonna yeah, play yeah, all the yeah. kids, right? We're gonna play all the kids. And almost as soon as he said that, like the, all the kids hit the bench. You know, like he stopped playing them because <laughs> like the pressure. And to be fair, right, the pressure comes on. It sets in. You've got to actually get performances, right? You need results, but. Yeah. It was just sort of weird timing in that regard. But, uh, and also, like a like a small footnote there, like it's so difficult to, to not get affected by the media and uh, Twitter in Turkey. Like, okay, my maybe like I started with like good intentions, but after a while, like the media was not 
like giving him any space the social media the fans were yeah. demanding like something yeah. else every single day so my guy kind of got like caught into it as well uh and then like he started like just making terrible decisions as well i think at a certain point like he's like um he's like man management and like uh, the squad decisions were just like awful uh yeah. substitutions especially everyone. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. he like, fell right back that was like sergan's trap as well yeah, yeah exactly like we were just like going through the same it felt like deja vu like you know like was this manager was supposed to change stuff but after a certain point it was just this, like we were back where we started you know yeah uh i'm just like moving like quite pacey right now if you want to just like talk about a specific point or like a specific no no game, you're doing great you're doing great i like i'm like quickly going through the season i uh i guess yeah. one real quick side side note on on everything you said so far and, and the only reason i haven't jumped in is because i agree uh you mentioned the fan pressure and i think for all of the the things that we'll probably talk about as being mm-hmm. responsible for our, our failures and for all of the um you know the things that can be done by management and like on the pitch and all of that th- this is a theme that we probably won't get to talk about a bunch but probably deserves a lot and it's it's that fan pressure it's our fan base uh it, it took basically until three weeks before the end of the season for us to like fill the stadium i mean there there's a there's an element to which our fans are really getting quite vocal in some ways but then like not coming through on the other end where where you know like the positives of having a really strong vocal fan base is they're going to come to the stadium and like make your home a fortress right but so if you're going to make all that noise on the outside and then not provide the the plus side our fans kind of come out looking like worse for the wear in, in that whole thing and it, perhaps you know like that's something us we as fans need to be more cognizant of and, and how we vocalize where we're supporting guys i know you're a big ozan fan he's a perfect example of a guy who uh, the fans God, turned on yeah i mean yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. right like we, <laughs> we have a tendency to like even if you really have negative feelings for a guy, if you're booing a guy on the pitch and you want him to perform for you in that moment, mm-hmm. are you helping him? Right? Are you helping your team? If you, you know what I'm saying, like we have yeah, to be man. more like, cognizant uh, of our actions. Just, just, as fans. just think about it. Like all those, like like we lost some games at Waterfall Park and like Batshuayi got booed in every single one of them. Like imagine like how it feels. Exactly. How, how it would feel. If, and like, you could never say his effort wasn't like, there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like my guy was like, okay, like he kind of like just like squandered a lot of chances, but like, it wasn't like he was he wasn't trying, you know? Yeah. Uh, he actually like, he was trying his best, but somehow like he just like were terrible at finishing. And at some games he was like just genuinely unlucky. Uh, but like he was like giving his like best effort still. Like I, I can't blame him for that. Like. Missed a lot of chances and I'm like, uh, at the heat of the moment, <laughs> I really like slated him. Uh, no, I mean, criticism, he, he merits criticism, right? But again, it's yeah. the way you deliver it, right? Like, if yeah, you're doing it when, anyone, exactly, right? Like, it's not going to help anyone if you just start booing a guy in the middle of the game when he has yeah. a ball. Yeah. You're actually like doing something that's going to cost you, you know, like doesn't make any, any sense. Exactly. Uh, you are the fans like, that you... That, you're supposed to make them want to perform for you, right? Like, as exactly. fans, right? So if you're making them hostile, you're, if you're making your team hostile towards you, yeah, yeah I don't care. I think like, there's at least subconsciously, there's a part where it's like, well, you know, excuse me, I'll have to bleep um, myself out now. But, you know, like, exactly. you want me to score a goal while you're booing me, and if I miss and I'm getting booed even more now, it's kind of like, why should I even try? Just take me out, you know? Like, yeah, and screw this. Exactly. And even if he, like, tries, like, imagine this, like, plus, uh, on top of that, uh, pretty sure like it's gonna affect other players as well. They, because c- once they see get someone getting booed, they're gonna know if they like do like one or two mistakes, they'll be in the same position, getting the same treatment, and like it will be like it will put extra pressure on them. Like okay, some players can thrive on it and like actually perform better, but like looking at the season, yeah. it's a gamble that like it's just like stupid. Like some most players just like 
uh, started performing worse and worse once we were like losing the game. They we didn't have that like power to like fire them back out. You know, like like we usually do in Border from Park even when we're down. Like yep. the the squad, like the fans kind of get the players fired up, the chance even if we were in the down. But like it's right now it's the opposite. Like look, I don't. I don't have anything like against like slandering a player <laughs> after a game. Yeah, like, online, you know, <laughs> at home. Like, yeah, yeah. Always yeah. yeah. mock I don't care. Like you can do whatever you want. But at the game, during the game, it's like just simply idiocy to just like start going hard on a player and booing him and like saying like bad words and bad chants about him. It's not going to help anyone exactly. in the end. And, yeah. the, and the defense that a lot of people have when they're hypercritical is like, well, they can they can ignore this. You know, they don't have to come online and like read my comments. They, they don't have to read the comments and their thing. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. And so fine, so fine. Like, have at it online, I guess, right? If you need to. But mm-hmm. that, like, at the stadium, they don't have that option of ignoring it, right? You know what I mean? And like, again, you're doing it in the heat of the moment when they're you're hoping yeah. you'd ideally be giving them an edge where they'd perform better. And in fact, you're dis- you're disincentivizing. So anyway, I mean, exactly. that's my little rant there. But for sure, that played a role in all of this. That has played a role in in various failings in our in our history. But let's move on. Um, but so yeah, so, so then finally, uh, Under is out, right? Yeah, like, I mean, like they kind of waited for him to. Uh, like technically, we won a super cup this season. That's the thing. Like yeah. most people forget, we actually won a cup this year. Okay, it's it's like it's it's the super cup. I get it, but still, like it's better than nothing. Yeah, add it to the tally though, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it's it's, it's at least a statistic, you know? Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Something. <laughs> uh, and then like they actually waited for Under to see if he could actually go all the way and win the Turkish Cup and once we lost to Kayseri Spore and just got eliminated that was the end of him uh, I think it was like it cost a lot it cost us a lot uh, because uh, I think <coughs> sorry uh, I believe like after the like, third or fourth game of his tenure um, we started to realize that he wasn't going to cut it, you know, like with his tactics and his decisions. He was he was incompetent to manage Besiktas, in my opinion. Like he didn't have any prior success or like adequate experience to manage Besiktas in the first place. But like you could start to tell after the first few games. So kind of like one of the biggest mistakes that we did this season was um, uh, not sacking Carvalho. Right, not not like and, sitting on the on the pot too long, if you will. Yeah, yeah just we're, like <laughs> waiting for him to like, uh, just like waiting for him to see, uh, we're waiting for him uh, to be successful in the Turkish Cup. Let's just put it that way. Uh, it was a bizarre decision. I don't think it was like it was worth it. But uh, you have to consider the other aspects of it. Maybe like like there were a lot of speculations about. I would sack him on the spot, like after the first few games and like hire Shen Organization. He was supposed to be an interim manager, like we said. Yeah. And that, at least that's what the media was saying uh, at that time. And they're like, I believe like Ganesh didn't want to come back because. Well, I, I, this is actually my rebuttal to that. To like, and this is perhaps where we can end the Cara Valley conversation. A little argument. I know. I don't know. I don't know if to disagree, but. Um, the only reason I'm actually okay with how things shook out, and it's two pronged, right? On the one hand, it's what you're saying. It kept us from hiring Chanel Dunant. If that's what it was, right? Because I, for me, that's moving backwards. That's that's a negative move for me. Yeah, not, I agree. I, I would agree. Right? He's, a, he's an outdated tactician. He, yeah, no, not saying already, like he wouldn't be successful. There's always a chance for like... Sure, yeah. sure. And, and, and if anything, that yeah. would be the trap, right? Like my... Yeah. My biggest fear is he got he gets us up to like fourth place or something. Um, <laughs> Boom, you know what I mean? And then we sign him, <laughs> right? We sign him for three years and like we get it's like the same thing over and over. Yeah, you know? it's, um, it's like it, it, it will become like a new Boris. Yeah, anyway. Right, and and still like without anything to really show for it except for like improvement, you know? Because like fourth place, it's not like we're hanging our you know a banner in the stadium on that but like at the same time everyone would be like oh but look we started in like ninth place and or 10th or whatever it was and but so statistics yeah. yeah you know like that that was my biggest fear and so and on the one hand i thought okay like at least 
they didn't go backwards. They, you know, supposedly they were looking for for Fark, right, Daniel Fark, and, and like it, it didn't pan mm-hmm. out. And then they had like a second place guy. That one didn't pan out. And so then they were like, all right, Bruno Pinheiro, I think. Yeah, exactly, Pinheiro from Estoril, exactly. But so. I actually appreciated the degree of patience that went into like, all right, we didn't get our guy, we didn't get our second guy, let's step back. Instead of rushing a decision, like, perhaps put, like, throwing a asked, bunch of money at Shenel Gunesh, right? At that time, like, when we were first looking for a manager, Ismail wasn't available, by the way. That's, that's, and that's, another, that's, a, that's an important point. And so, mm-hmm. like, you, you, you kind of feel like past um, boards, which just at that point, like we failed on plants A and B, and maybe even C. Let's throw a ton of money at Chanel Gunesh and just like take care of this problem the way we always do, you know? And so, and if he says no, we'll throw an even, like, add on another half a million, you know, or add on a, a plus one in his favor so he can resign. Wow. You know what I mean? Like that's what it would come yeah. to. Kind of. It would have been disaster, you know? Like, exactly, disaster, exactly. Like, uh, and, and then, but, like, but then financially, and like, just like in terms what? of like corporate governance, yeah? Exactly, and just where it pans out for us footballing-wise, right? We're stuck with kind of an outdated tactician. But so, and like, let's not forget his failings with the national side. But besides that, um, the other trap that you fall into potentially is look what happened with Galatasaray and Dominic Torrent, you know? Mm-hmm. He, mm-hmm. right, like, there, the, the problem that Galatasaray has now is there are two legitimate camps. One camp that says, this dude sucks, right? Like he has shown <laughs> nothing. He's shown nothing, and we are his ass, yeah. right. We got like the worst uh, placing we've ever had in our club's history. But then, then the other camp, which is that he has a pedigree, and he still technically has not gotten his transfer window, you know, his summer yeah, to get I his mean, guys in and to implement his right. And so you, you and, I would and of agree course, with the letter, by the way. I wouldn't either because I think we've, he's shown enough capacity to fail. But no, wait, there will always wait, be wait, those wait, wait, doubts, wait, wait, wait. right? Yo, wait, wait. I said I would, I would agree <laughs> with the latter. <laughs> oh, well, but I mean, that's and that's what I was actually going to argue for the other side, but like playing devil's advocate, because I do, like, although I honestly think he's failed enough, I would also say, and like, the, you have to say that the dude has not been given the chance to make his own yeah. roster, right? Like, yeah, fundamentally, exactly. as a coach, you have to be given that opportunity. And so yeah, now yeah. you're kind of stuck with same. your rock in a hard place. Same, it's, it's, it's the same that applies to us right now, I think. Um, again, like, is well, my, uh, I, I, th- I think we can have more of a positive outlook in that, like, well, all right, let me, like, all right, let's, before I even t- give you my take on Ismail, yeah, let's do that. Let's talk now about the last stretch, because we've pretty much covered Undev Caravelli. So then mm-hmm. we bring in Valeria and Ismail, right? What, like, yes, what are exactly. your thoughts on this final stretch? Uh, I mean, like, uh, I think, I think, uh, he's a good, uh, he's a good appointment. Uh, like, the reason I think that is because that, um, actually he has a plan of what he wants to do. I'm not saying that, like, that's a straight recipe for success, but, like, I'm actually more, like, positive about a manager who knows what he like actually wants to do and like what tactics he wants to employ and like what like has a certain type of vision instead of a manager that goes in and like tries to wing it with populist remarks and just like making like uh, tweaks right here and there and like hoping for the best like that's what we had basically prior to that so like uh, Ismail and his like tactics and his approach and like his uh, and I think like his best quality is that like he really wants to succeed. He's so hungry for success, man. Like his statements, like is definitely like what we've seen from the media, like and all, all those reporters saying that he actually like never missed a single on the 18s or like 19s, like like those like academic players. You saw him, games, yeah. You there know? was always images of him in the crowd watching too. It yeah, that is crazy, inspiring. man. Like that, like yeah. given our situation right now, like the re- like you have to consider we're in a terrible terrible financial situation and it's not just because of us like the country is like tanking oh, yeah. economically it has like a dire effect it has like a really really serious effect uh and like our hope is to get the players out of academy and like we have yeah. like historically we've been able to do that like we've, we've been able to like polish players uh like just like we're like kind of like showing some sort of promise 
playing in those like uh, in table clubs or like just like lower divisions. Uh, we have the history to do that. Like we look at like Rizal Chelimbay, look at uh, Shifo Mehmet. They all that kind of like history. Uh, exactly. And also um, this season as well. Just just look at it, man. Like who, who who's the player that you were most excited about? Just tell me. This you season. mean like coming into this team? No, yeah, not coming into the team, like, like, spawn boys, you can tell anyone, you can just say, like, Gazal. Okay, maybe you, you would say Gazal, like, the most exciting player we had this season. I was Gazal, about to but, say like, Gazal, yeah, I was gonna say Gazal, yeah. but then I was like, you mean, like, yeah. a new guy? Because like, then I would like, probably... Besides Gazal, besi okay, like, Gazal is an obvious choice, but besides Gazal, who would you pick? I was gonna say, like, Pjanic or Bacuay, right? Like, one of No, like, not, I'm not saying, like, coming into the season, now that the season is over, right now. Oh! Like, just say, yeah. Oh, probably Emirhan, right? Exactly, that's my point. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say the okay. same. Like, yeah, see, that's, that's like, what I was wondering. If you're like coming into the season like or, or now, yeah. He looks like man. Like he touches his passes yeah. against a fan of, like, in that kind of Bacha game. And like, what was the next game? Like, Sivaspor, I think? Like, mm -hmm. oh, like, you can just like dish a pass and like suddenly boom, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. And I actually said this on air. Uh, we struggled for a, like after the, the initial excitement of coming of, of him coming in, Ismail. We struggled a little bit to create chances, and the one move he made was to put Emiathan in consistently. And immediately, his ability to link up defense and attack just yeah. flipped it, and we were creating like 20 chances a game from then on. Like it was it's crazy. It's very crazy decisive. Like, yeah, that, that's why like it, it proves that we have something going on in academy, and like you can like. If you actually read about it or like watch our like academic games, you can kind of tell that like there are some like promising players who can actually become really, really, really good players if they put in the effort and if they train well. And I like that's why like uh, besides the like most obvious success point of view, I think like Ismail can like achieve big stuff at this club. Yeah, no. believe in him. Like it's it's not about like it's it's. it's it's not about like winning the title right away, like that's what Sergen did, but he kind of like messed up in many other areas, so it didn't work out for him in the end. Yeah, he lacked everything that Ismail essentially has. No, and what, I, I, I actually agree with everything you said, and to piggyback on it actually, I would argue that what's best about him is that the, the foundations he's trying to instill, which are, um, uh, you know, high fitness levels, like uh, exactly. positional discipline, right? Like creating actual lines, especially on, on defense. These are things that even if he doesn't himself pan out and he moves on eventually, he's creating a foundation, kind of in like a village sort of way from back in the day, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. we're gonna be able to build on, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's gonna be, no matter what success we get short term, you're, it's a direction we're clearly gonna benefit from no matter what happens next. Exactly. And then, and then, um, I mean, yeah, sorry. I mean, uh, that's probably, uh, I, that's enough on that on his mind so far. I, I, I guess, no, the one other thing I would say is that um, comparing to like the Torrent situation, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot less of a downside in terms of what was shown on the pitch. And, what I mean is that with Ismail, right, he went three, four, and one. Only one loss in his time here. And that's despite us playing, uh, you know, Trabzon, yeah. uh, Fenerbahce, Alanya, Kasim Pasha was the one loss. We, they we, were, like, we, we, could have, we could have, we could have, and should have won both, by the way. I know, I know. And we played yeah, better was, in both of those matches. We played yeah, Konya like, Spor, like who was in Ubar, second, right? Like, yeah. We played exactly. all solid competition. Um, even Gostepe was like, on the road, their final match in the Super League, the fans were hot and we were two men down, you know what I mean? And we it's won, crazy, like, yeah. handily. But so, exactly. and, like, most importantly, he never once got, like, an ideal starting 11. By then, already you had guys who were, like, already on their way out, you know what I mean? Like, low knees were clearly not coming back and were pegged to, to go. You had a ton of oh, injuries. Yeah. You had all this, like, Valente Lozier somehow suspended himself out of the last, like, <laughs> Two weeks Two of the season. <laughs> um, uh, like, yeah, I'm out. I think we're done here. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, he, despite all of that hardship, and you know, uh, he really yeah. managed to put out pretty decent performances. And we played, especially like as things went on, right? Like we we started to see a real kind of ethos, right? We had a, a plan. We were playing fairly well. I mean, that Konya sport exactly. was a disappointment, perhaps, in some ways. But I mean, the philosophy is like, 
Yeah. <laughs> must in today's football for sure. Yeah. So. And I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. I, I think we're on the same page. I guess we're not arguing too much. Uh, exactly, bro. I totally agree with uh, everything that you've said. I co-signed them. Um, the thing is that um, oh, I should have said like a co-signed you with that <laughs> discussion. Anyway, um, like I, I would have uh, like three main things when I think about like his man's performance and like what he's achieved. I think like three different topics. Come leading, you know. Uh, first of all, like uh, looking at the point where he like just started, like he was like we employed him basically and started working on the team and like the tactics and the training and everything. And looking where he has ended up, ended up. Uh, I think like physically, we're in a s- such better place, you know. Like we didn't have any preseason camp on the second and like. You could you could tell that like after a certain point around like the 70th minute mark our team was like starting to drop. Yeah. Like, our performance was starting to drop because like physically we weren't there and like one of Sergan's like most strongest points last season was the fact that like he was able to like uh, perform a physically challenging game and like succeed in it even later on in the season and even in the dying minutes of certain games. We lacked that this season and like it was like one of our like most uh, fragile um, weaknesses, you know. Uh, and like uh, after Ismail came on and like started working on that, like you could tell that we were running more, we were performing better, and physically we were in the game much more, you know. Uh, secondly, like you like you've pointed out, uh, he didn't have a, a desirable squad to work with, like. Uh, Especially considering the tactics and like the like the preferred formation he has, preferred philosophy he has, uh, the pe- plan. The, the most most players were not suitable. Okay, like Pjanic, he's a great player, but he's like suitable for a certain role, and like that role just not, doesn't fit in like his mouse system. Yeah. Uh, for players who fit in that like system, actually, like looking at Ridvan and Emiran, mm-hmm. they had like these like big. Uh, a big like, jump in their performances, yeah, exactly, yeah they yeah. started like playing way better. So what else? What else? Like the third point I was gonna make, kind of, kind of forgot. <laughs> I, I, I almost did that the last time too. There was something. Uh, oh yeah, okay, yeah. The third point. Uh, some people might disagree with me. Uh, due to his tactic, we were able to like fix uh, one of the biggest problems we've had earlier in the season: our defending. Yes, yeah, especially yeah, on the counter, right? had, like, yeah. yeah, we had shambolic defending and like he kind of like started employing this like uh, fluent philosophy where players were able to like contribute on both ends of the pitch so that we were a- able to like defend better in that aspect because like, we had some like terrible howlers mm-hmm. during the course of the season, especially with Vida uh, and Montero, you know, like just kind of <laughs> bottling it in certain games. Yeah. Well, uh, what's great about like, the three men back line is it puts way less pressure on those individuals, right? You can kind of make right. a mistake and, and somebody will get back to cover for you. you again, know? again, he, he kind of achieved that like with with some like unfavorable players playing a three. Yeah. Uh, playing a back three, you know. Yeah. No doubt. Like so, I don't think our like defenders, especially like our like uh, first choice defenders, were not quite suitable for that role. No. And like seeing at that and like what he's uh, managed to achieve. The limited <laughs> supply he had in his hands, shall we say? Yeah. Uh, I think he, he he might he might succeed yeah. if you make the right moves. This is the actually summer. the perfect jumping off for the second part of our, our episode here, and that's mm-hmm. let's talk about next season. Let's and, and obviously there's not much to say about next season per se, but what we need next season and what we're gonna do this summer. You know, obviously the one and the biggest move, which could be the most decisive, is that Jedson Fernandez is coming in, right? Oh yeah. That oh, yeah. in and of itself yeah. is just huge. That's Yeah. I still it, don't know how we managed to snatch it. I know. <laughs> like you know, like sign him, you know? And like it's crazy, like it's it's 
<laughs> it's just terrible for God. This is our fans, honestly. Like, I can't especially see with their so finish about it. Especially with their yeah. finish this season. You know, it's it's fantastic. Um, it's crazy. Yeah. The bad sort of note that I have is that apparently we've let John Bose do on. You know, we've not used that option on him. Right? Is that correct? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, honestly, uh, wasn't able to follow that. So I haven't read any reports like confirming or denying it, but I mean, technically, uh, I, I, I can like, uh, I, I don't think we'll sign him. Just let me put it that way. See, I, I wouldn't have we'll minded him. him for depth just because he's Turkish, he's young. Uh... Yes, but the option is just too much. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and here's the reality too. 4.5, I think 4.5, yeah. if I recall correctly. Oh, is that right? I thought it was actually less. It doesn't even matter though, because like actually, if you think about it, with Jedson coming in, playing probably next to Joseph, we've already got uh, Jedson's backup vis-a-vis Emirhan, right? Who mm -hmm. should also like, get a lot of time in the first oh, unit as okay. well. So I just, by the way, I just googled it. I was like terribly wrong. It was like 1.8 million euros. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it was only like two. But still, at the, like yeah, especially... but still, it's too much fun. <laughs> That makes... It wasn't very good. <laughs> in, 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 yeah, in euros, it's like 40 million euros, bro. Well, and think That's about crazy. this. Think about this, too. If you look at, like, we really need two strikers, two central mm -hmm. defenders, a winger. Um, I think we're actually good in the center of the midfield, even without John Bozdewan. So this is why it kind of makes sense. Because if you can add that two million to, for example, a striker, think about the difference mm -hmm. between offering like six million versus eight, right? Because that's perhaps what got RC Lance, this is our first news item, uh, Adam Buxa. Yeah. We're not getting Buxa because they could offer somewhere between six and eight million. We were only offering four. So there you, there you have it right there, the two million. Now, we, can't, we, can't, we can't match that price. And I was gonna say, he's not the example of someone who you'd want that extra two million for. I'm actually okay with not, right? He's an MLS guy. He had a, a bad year in MLS too before the good one, so like, I'm okay not taking that risk on him, personally. The thing is that, like, um, considering his style and his, like, physical He could have fit, no like, doubt. He he's fit. the perfect match for the Super League. Like, you've seen, yeah. like, strikers like that, like, Soloth, Cornelius, yeah. both have, like, flopped big time before coming to Turkey, and they had, like, great seasons. No doubt. Like, he's, like, tall, like, he's, like... I think this, he would have done well. Like, no. Modern target man. This so, is like, actually... My, my silver lining but, is that... Yeah. yeah well, but, my silver like, lining... Like is that it actually i think speaks well to our scouting right we're actually finding guys like that and looking at them and like that's a that's a new approach for us not going for a big name going for a guy who's more like 25 and up and coming mm -hmm. rather than a you know 30 year old or like Bachua, you know but um mm -hmm. but yeah like whether I, I, I we're not in a position to offer eight million or even six million you know yeah, uh, I was gonna say that like yeah we can't afford that so there's no point in just like arguing about it exactly it? yeah yeah um but so, right, the next big name up there is, uh, what's this guy's name? I forgot already. Um, Caicedo, right? Jordi. Jordi oh. Caicedo. Yeah, Jordi Caicedo. Yeah, Looks very intriguing, too. Again, I, I'm impressed <laughs> by the scouting. Um, great, again, physical frame, right? It fits that more. Yeah. Exactly. Um, um, I'm all for it. Like, yeah, I've seen, like, uh... I've seen some of the games he played, uh, playing for Ecuador. Uh, I think that like he's one of the strikers who would be like uh, making a lot of runs. Mm -hmm. Like you're like uh, a Manica type. Player yeah, that's, that's what I've heard. I've heard that. Yeah. Like, he obviously like had a good season in Bulgaria. Yeah. Uh, I think like 16 goals in 28 games in the league. It's pretty impressive. Uh, even though it's Bulgaria, uh, and uh, the thing about like our players this year, like, I'm not gonna like talk too much about tra transfers. I reckon, as you've just pointed out, like we're obviously doing some scouting. It's not yeah. like, that's like that's so apparent. Uh, and then like if the manager and the staff approve the player that is being suggested to them, I'm not gonna go ahead and like just like. Uh, argue about it or like be against it you know like yeah there's no yeah. point in opposing if they like yeah get approved by the staff because like we don't know how they play and that most important is that we don't know how they fit in the system exactly 
No, and they might be just like individually. They might be like really, really, really. Yeah. But like, if if they're like, if 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 it's the perfect fit for the system, which we we will definitely be next year, a system team, like instead of like relying on like individual talent or like something else, like we we will be like employing to like we'll be looking to employ this. Uh, certain type of system. So if it fits there, I'm down. Exactly. Yeah. What about you, man? What exactly. do you think? I'm 100% in agreement. No, and I and I think like if their solution for our starting striker is like Burak Yilmaz, we can start complaining, right? But obviously, <laughs> right, even like if if Burak Yilmaz or Jenk Tosin were to come in at a reasonable offer as our backup. We need a Turk, right? We need two strikers, mm-hmm. so I actually don't even mind that. Especially if we have a third, right? There's talk of like Tiago Chukur, for example, right? Like if we have a third young Turkish striker no. who could theoretically take that second, or even like, you know, who knows, but first position as a striker down the line, um, you know, then it puts, like a, a, a Cenk Tosun or a Burak Yilmaz is kind of like, yeah, whatever, like let's see if they can fill in and add us some depth and like, you know, again, but if they're if they're asking for a ton of money, I wouldn't even you know, that would would not be worthwhile in my opinion. But yeah, I mean that's that's my take on striker. I'm down for anyone who they think fits the bill um, in that Kaiseido role or you know Buxa was, was a nice look. Yeah, I mean I, I'm down for all of it. Also worth mentioning uh, Jackson Muleka. I don't know how Kasim Pasha let that pass, but apparently um, he's back with Standard Liège, so we could theoretically offer something for him. We've, We've been on the books as doing so. He oh, would yeah. be a great pickup. Like, you know, it's funny. I, before the Kasim Pasha, Pasha match, I watched this like highlight reel of Jackson Muleka because he had been really hot coming into that. And I thought immediately, like, oh, we're screwed. He's gonna, you know, like mm-hmm. he's going to bring this energy against us, and we're kind of disheartened and playing just to close out the season. I, I had over, mm-hmm. I had almost chalked it up as an L just seeing that. Uh, and he does bring a lot of dynamism up front, and he would be, I think, a good match as well. He kind of, you know, but he or Jordi Caicedo kind of almost fit the same profile. Very athletic, very um, pacey. Yeah, I, I would love to see either one, honestly. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I definitely agree with you, man. Like, I, I don't have anything against them, especially like that we've seen Mulega play at Pass and Pasha. He, like, he banged a lot of goals. I think he had like 13 uh, goals and 14 performances. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he killed yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Like, he was one of those players who came in and just like made a like instant impact. And so, uh, again, like, if the staff approves him, if Adam Murray, my guy, uh, approves him, if Big Is approves him, I, I have nothing against it, you know? Yeah. You have any any word on the Thiago Chukur thing? Like that was Ah oh, that that's 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 a dodgy question I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 mean, I don't know I don't know like where where they found this guy. He's even Honestly, on the national team. Like, I hated that they called him. Yeah, out. that's that's what I'm saying. Like suddenly in the national team and like <laughs> He looks I haven't seen players come in that easy at all. Yeah. My guy, like Asset, had to play in the U90 for years now, my guy's like, how old is Thiago, by the way? I don't know. That like guy, he's like 19? 19, 19 yeah. <laughs> like, suddenly, yeah, he's, he's, he's 19. He's suddenly, he's in the, like, the first team. Like, what? what? <laughs> Pardon my language, but, like, how? I don't know. He plays for what? Like, we play for Watford on the 23s, man. <laughs> it's crazy. So, I feel like, like they did that literally just to, like, add another million to if, if we want to buy him. Like, just to screw with us, man. Like, I don't know, there's like, a maybe, conspiracy. Maybe they're, worried, maybe they're worried that he will play for, like, the Netherlands in the future. But I don't know, like, how they can, like, decide that this guy has massive potential. So that, like, oh, we should definitely snatch this guy and, like, time. It was so uh, weird. It was so yeah, weird. you know, like so they would like play for Turkey. Otherwise, like we will, it will be too late and won't, we won't be able to. I definitely play. like. <laughs> like it's fine <laughs> if he's like the third striker option for Besiktas, but like for the national team, like what are you talking about, man? Like let's yeah, at least get a look at this kid. What? Yeah, like like no one's ever seen him play. It's I don't crazy. think there's okay, but perhaps like some some certain people knew about like him four years. people <laughs> yeah but like i genuinely don't think like anyone in the media especially in the ma- mainstream media and those like 
uh, Twitter tycoons that you see tweet <laughs> a lot of like popular stuff. I don't think they've seen this guy play for a single minute. Yeah. Okay, there there will be some like Twitter scouts who are absolute like monsters in that aspect. Like they watch the like Indonesian third division or whatever. <laughs> so like those guys would, would I, I would assume that those guys have seen him play. But like everyone else, it's just like a. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like an unknown player. It's so weird. You know? It's so weird how this stuff happens, man. Yeah, so, <laughs> but like, I mean, I'm not saying like uh, he's, he's terrible or anything like that. I've never seen him play. Yeah. Never. But like, uh, it's, it's so weird that suddenly this guy is in the discussion. Uh, like, suddenly playing for the first team. <laughs> uh, for, the, for the Turkish national team, I mean. And, uh, it's wild. Um, but so, yeah, like, again, that, like, if he's our like Guven replacement, I don't mind because Guven obviously, like. Oh yeah, about that, like about the rene- renewals, like we, we don't. Things are like we're so in the dark right now. Yeah, we are. With the new, like we don't know who's gonna like. Perhaps that's new, in part because like elections least. were coming, so people, you know. Yeah, yeah, I would assume as well. Uh, I guess there's some news too, so, right? Ahmed Nurcebi's yeah, back, so that's official. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's really news, man. Like it was. I know. So obvious. Like, that's why I didn't any, even like. I didn't like challenge. lead the episode with it or anything. Like it's hardly. Yeah. yeah Basically it's... running against the nobody, so yeah. it wasn't like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that much of a. Shock. Yeah. Exactly. Um, about the transfers, yeah. Again, like with the system we have, like we're like kept in the dark now more than ever. At least the fans. Yeah. Um, and we've been so caught off guard. Like remember G- Gazal and Rosier. We've been pleasantly surprised in recent years, so we yeah, can't complain. Yeah, yeah. Like we start gets on. Okay, like we have our first signing, technically. Uh, so like that's one thing that we can write. Like he's one of the. Okay, he will probably play. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. He will probably start. So it's the you can like actually write someone down on the starting lineup. We don't know like Ashton will stay. We might sell him. I yeah, actually, you know, I will say, I'm if, he, sure. if he goes, I feel like Mert Gunok is proper insurance for Emre Bilgin. I would actually uh, love to see exactly, this. Emre exactly, exactly. I mean, uh, that would be a, like a bad move, right? Technically. And we keep our yeah. Turk in place, right? We don't have to worry about another yeah, form. Exactly, exactly. Left back, Rudvan, again, great player. And like considering the left back position is a, is a great asset, but we don't know if he will stay. We don't know if he will sell him. Yeah, we'll have okay, to get like a central defense. Theoretically. Vida is definitely leaving right now. Yeah. He's not going to stay. Yeah, all right, yeah. Let's uh, do it position have... by position. Yeah, we've covered keeper. Yeah, that's what now, yeah, at. central defender, right? Like, we know Vida's out. In fact, like, you know what? Here, hold on. Before we even start this, let me quickly go over, like, how, how many foreign slots do we have available to us now? Or, or rather, how many are occupied as things stand, right? So we have no no foreign keepers. We have uh, Wellington and Montero on the back line going into next season. We have Rosier as a fullback. So there's three. We have, um, in the center of... Our midfield: Joseph, Jedson, maybe Atiba. Right? We we hope. I'm sure he'll yeah, get it. Yeah, that's another topic. We still don't know. I, let's just let's yeah. just chalk him in, right? So wait, what does that leave us with? Like five, right there? Mm-hmm. Um, I think so, no, no, wait. Two, three. Uh, you said like Montero, Wellington, uh, Rosier. Also six, uh, six, right? Because there's Jedson, Atiba, and Joseph in the midfield. Yes, yeah, so six yeah. there. Okay. And then we have Nkudu and Gazal on wings. That's it for foreigners. So that's uh, eight. That's it? Uh, we don't have anyone else? That's it. Because we have no oh. strikers, right? Laren's out, technically. Bashuai is gone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, theoretically, uh, our ninth uh, uh, could be Hasic, right? He's returning. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have him, fam. Like, don't, don't, don't write him off. No, and I heard, yeah, he's going to get a, a proper look, supposedly. I mean, but so look, that means we have at most nine. So we, we have at least three. Oh, we, 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 also have to, we, we also have Teixeira. I don't think he's going to. Oh, be. yeah, Alex Teixeira. Right. So, all right. So we have two slash three foreign slots, right? Because we can have 12 next mm-hmm. season. Is that still correct? Uh, <laughs> it's another debate, man. You can't know. You'll never know with Turkish football, man. So it's like so that. So they'll, they'll, they'll like pass a decision and like boom, like it will be lifted, bro. Yeah, that would be ideal, know. right? Yeah. You never know. Like it's, it's definitely in discussion right now. Like we, we have the elections coming up. 
Yeah. It suddenly changed. Any minute. So we, yeah. Um. But so yeah, all right. That's so let's say, like, definitely on the books, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys. Eight with Alex Teixeira, and then Atiba and and Hasich, nine, ten. Which means we have at least two foreign spots, which should cover yeah. us, right? We need one central defender who's like better than the ones we have. Ideally, like our best central defender will be whoever comes in. Uh, we need one striker, clearly striker number one, and that'll be a foreigner. And that's really it, right? Because like beyond that, like if you look at our back three as it stands, right? It's Wellington, uh, Montero, and Serdar Sachi, right? I bro, we we all, like we have we have so many players that like uh, we might suddenly sell. Like by the way, we forgot about in Sakala. We don't know about him. Yeah, we but I mean, he, he won't take a foreign. He still has spot, like right? a couple of years. Like I think he has like two years. But he, his contract. He probably won't take a foreign spot. I, I, I assume we're trying to offload him, right? I mean, I don't know. I, I never even hated him that much. I don't really understand. We need to be able to offload him. Like that's the thing. Or maybe like Valerian is my will watch him. Like he's a great physical player. He might be like he lacks in talent and like technicality and everything. I mean, like but, not technicality, and technique. But with three back, he could, could, we could probably cover for some of the depth. Yeah, I mean, like, he could definitely play as a wing back, as a great like with one replacement in that system at least. I would assume. That's interesting. All right. Well, like, we'll see. Like I don't know, like what conditions he's in. Very interesting. Like how he has been after that, like injury and everything. That's right. That's right. Uh, that's another topic. Like it's so unclear for us. Like it's so difficult to paint the picture. Yeah. Of how it will be next season, yeah. but I would assume, like just like you're saying, uh, we definitely need a defender. Right. We need definitely, need and I would up. say we need to look again. Looking at those three: uh, Wellington, Montero, and Serdar Sachi. Right? I, ideally, Serdar Sachi is depth, and we have a better Turkish guy there, which I think everyone thinks it will be like Abdul Kerim Bardakci or something like that. Fine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Kod Kod Kodai, Kodai Gunter, you know. right? Um, yeah. Then, ideally, we have a better foreign central defender to offset. Ideally, in my opinion, Wellington. Um, you know, Wellington, Montero, they could alternate. You know, whoever's in better form. If someone, you know, if Montero makes another stride forward, ideally. Um, yeah. yeah. And then, right, because it's important to note that he's actually fairly young. That, that was a good coup on our part, I would have to say. Anyway, um, so that's it for the back line, essentially, right? Ideally, we have a better Turk step in. For the back three, uh, I think we definitely need more depth. We need at least six players. Well, and so we need at least six defenders there. Yeah. So look, at if we six, have we play in the back three. Um, central defender number one, who's like unnamed. I don't even think we have any like real rumors for a but, foreigner like, yet. We, we might, we might. By the way, we might, we might cut it down to five, considering that we'll have no European football next year. It would be just the league. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, so look, so hold on. Five. Look, I think we actually already have the six. Because so look, take central defender number one, whoever that is. Um, the Turk, like Abdul Kerim Bard, actually, that's two. And then three would be Montero, and then Wellington, number four, Serdar Sachi, number five, and then Nejip is, is six. Yes, exactly. I was going to say Nejip, exactly. Technically, have him. He's a makeshift defender. He can play as a central defender. Why I not? actually think that's where he's um, best, especially like in derbies he's, he's, and stuff like that. You know, he's, he's alright. <laughs> His passion. Yeah. But yeah, he's more than sufficient for the league. Exactly. Definitely. So then fullback, uh, we talked about maybe an encyclical return. Obviously, Umut Merash is decent cover, but we'll need at least another one, another guy there. Uh, are there any Turkish fullbacks you're aware of? Like, obviously, Onur Bulut is like the the big name. Uh, right? I, I, th I think I, I think Ridwan's going to stay, man. I genuinely think that. Because, like, if you sell him, you'll be, like, dropping the Turkish sport, and, like, there is no good Turkish left back to fill that position. Okay, yeah, if we can Turkish keep him, I want him. Good as good. Like, why not up yeah, his value? Uh, At this point, it's clear his value is only going up, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, we can't, like, just, like, cover him. I think, like, he will, like, perform even better this season onto this specific system, so we might even be able to, like, sell him for yeah, a more. bigger price next year. You never know. If he's part of a really good campaign, uh, especially, right? Yeah, no, no, you, you, can, you can, like, literally tell that like since like the, these wing backs are so involved in this type of like tactic yeah you, like like it or not like they're gonna like they're gonna be getting more chances and they'll like put themselves they'll have the chance to put themselves under the spotlight that's what i'm trying to get at yeah, yeah. anyway all right perfect let's move on so then center of the midfield obviously we're really covered we have jetson emirhan in the one position we have joseph 
Atiba, again, Nejip as, as a utility guy there. We have a number of guys coming back, like... Um, Mehmet Topal. Mehmet, <laughs> right. Okay. But I'm thinking, like Kartal, play, I was thinking have... like Kartal, Kaida, Yilma. Like we actually have some young guys yeah. coming back from loan. We love, we, have, we love Sally as well. Sally, right. I mean, we have, yeah, we're, 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 we're good. I think we're good. I think between the, the kids that's, who are coming that's, back... That's why, like, yeah, exactly. With the loanies coming back and everything, that's why we see these reports about, like, why Tiba might not renew his contract, you know? Yeah, like, at this point, like, I mean, I feel like we have to sign him. We should, because, like, just to help him out with like, yeah. prepping for the World Cup. Yeah, not, not, not about helping him out. Like, he'll go play in the World Cup. And actually, he was one of our best performers late in the year. I, I, so, like, he, he will play. He has to play. Like, technically, he will be, like, uh, positive about playing because, like, he has to, like, keep informed. Yeah. No, I mean... Uh, he hasn't really. But the thing is that, like, if you if you like sell him, if you sell him, you get that extra foreign spot. Yeah. That's the thing. That's the dilemma there. Like, we already have like. One might argue that we already have like adequate amount of midfielders, even though T was good. Uh, yeah. No. You can't use that spot to sign a striker or anything like something like that. Like something that is more essential. That's the debate right now we're facing. Technically, it's definitely more of a sentimental. Uh, I'm an move. emotional guy. Yeah. I'm an emotional guy, exactly. Like we have to like uh, give credit where it's due. Like this guy it's a club legend. has busted his balls off for like how many years now? Like almost ten years. Like he's done everything for this club. Like you can't just like you have to. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are ethics, you know. Yeah. And there's ethics to this, and like Definitely. to keep that club spirit, I think we should keep him, even though like uh, on paper and like uh, if I was to think just like from a logical point of view, it would be. One could argue that like it would be more beneficial to offload him, but like still, like there are some other dynamics. No, too. I'm with you. I'm, I think that's the sentimental move, and like he's a club legend, man. Like that guy should get a statue in front. He needs to finish his career with that. He needs to represent us with the World Cup. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, but so I, the, the, whatever that scenario, however that shakes out, we're definitely good as far as the center of our midfield is concerned. And so now I, let's move to wings, which is where there's a little more intrigue. So we have obviously Gazal and Nkudu. Hey. Well, before we do that, like we didn't talk about the right flank, the wing backs. Oh, you know. sure. So we have Rosie, obviously, but like Kerem. Yeah. Is he, he doesn't is he like Kerem. I heard he's already talking about like making Kenan Karaman like. Oh, I totally forgot about that, bro. My guy, yeah. He wasted his career playing as an attacker. Bro. I know, right? Like bro, maybe this is where he needs to play. It was funny. Bro, he was in yeah, he was he was great. Like was was one of the like silver linings of the season for me technically. Finding out to that he might that, be a like, winger. To, like, yeah, we have a great player in Canal who can actually perform the like right wing back. Yeah, and like why not, man? The, like, we can use him definitely. The the final match of the season against Konya, like he couldn't get back, and that was part of like how they passed the ball in for that for their big goal. But like. It's fine. It was like his third match against ever. Fenerbahce, though. No, he was fantastic. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But, but for me, again, like as, as like that's one mistake, and it was his third match as a wing back. Mm -hmm. He's gonna work at it, especially positionally. Right? That that's that comes with experience. So I actually, I'm very okay with the one mistake. You know what I mean? Like I I feel like um, it's a it's a it's a revelation, and we. It's it's good to find a use for this guy, right? In fact, yeah. he actually scored a goal as a wing back. <laughs> it's so funny. He got his second goal of the season. He was a striker and a, and a, and a right wing for much of the season. Couldn't he only scored one goal? Two matches as a, as a right wing back, and he scores the second of the season. So maybe that's yeah, where he, he needs to play. Yeah, like yeah, I mean, like he was <laughs> way more useful as a wing back. That's right. I that that's another thing. Like we were so pissed about Rosie getting sent off. Uh, we would never. Yeah, we would never discover. Seen players back and like we would never knew. Like yeah, we would never know. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, 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 but so, yeah, that just about covers it. I mean, I don't think we need to spend money on that. Between Kenan and Kedem, we got some cover there. Um, so now the wings, and, and here's where we start getting a little interesting. Mm -hmm. So again, we have Gazal and Kudu mm -hmm. pegged in as starters. Mm -hmm. uh, we have. Aydin Hasic, who can relieve sort of either one, mm -hmm. and Alex Teixeira as well, who can kind of, you know, I think that's your left wing. Oh, right wait, wait a backup. second, wait a second. Did you count Hasic as well for the for foreigner? I did, I did. Yeah, yeah that was a 10th. Okay. And that's a question mark. We still have two slots with, with him and Alex, but okay. it's a question mark, I guess. 
Um, but so theoretically, we have four guys there. Uh, now, should, shouldn't, we, shouldn't we supposed to... Uh, okay, we have hostage coming in as well. Okay, never mind. Never mind, never mind. I'm do not. you really think Alex Teixeira stays? Um, I'm pretty sure that like it, if an offer comes, we'll sell him. But I'm not sure if we'll get an offer for him. If a it, lot of if, folks if, were if speculating. We do, if we do that, that's that's. I'm pretty sure that like is like is my doesn't really fit into the system. May, I might be wrong. Maybe like if if he has a good preseason, if he like trains well, maybe like he'll adapt better. But I'm not sure if uh, <laughs> he'll be motivated to do that. And I'm, uh, yeah. I'm confident that like we'll sell them if on the condition that like we get an offer for. Him. Sure. Yeah, and I think um, you know a lot of people speculated that because he started seeing the bench at the end of the year, that it signaled that perhaps the board was already getting offers from like Brazil or something. I don't think it's worth speculating that too much. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly think it was more that Ismail was like looking at his options, younger guys, like just trying to see what he has to build with going forward. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I'm not opposed to him staying or going. I think he didn't quite get a fair... Like, the, the injury really sucked, the timing of it. Yeah. Remember he came in, scored like a brilliant goal yeah. um, from distance, and then like went back down to injury the next week, and then didn't come back for like a month and a half. And, but once and then... he was fit, we were doing pretty shit. And, like, was, like, exactly. that meant, like, in that psychology, it's hard to like <laughs> get back into it. So Yeah, and I don't know he necessarily had a, a clear-cut role. I think if he knows he's like a winger or he's, you know, yeah. like, right? We when you're not playing with a number ten and that's what you're sort of brought in for, it, it adds a little bit of curiosity to it all. But I think you know, like I'm surprised we never tried him out as a striker. He has some experience there. He clearly has the ability to finish. He's not like a, a big guy, but mm -hmm. um, you know, considering how much of our build up was on the ground, regardless, I don't know. I felt like we could have at least given it a shot, but we didn't. Whatever. But so there's some question marks as to whether we need maybe someone to spell Nkudu. It could be Alex Teixeira. If not, right, there was that like Jakob Ondrejka, right? There's this oh, Swedish yeah. guy with a Polish name. <laughs> 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 any any word on that? Yeah, word is good. Uh, I don't think I've seen him play live. I, I might have seen some highlights of his. Uh, but from like some really good reliable uh, sources, shout out to my man, uh, Kubala, Polish expert, and like the Scandinavian league expert. Uh, he like he like really praised him and his style. He kind of like well, he was really positive about books as well. Who's Polish? Uh, when we when the first when the when the rumors first came up, uh, hopefully the. <laughs> The conclusion of the story will, won't be similar as the book, books of saga, but yeah, I mean, I think I think he would be a good signing for us. And he can play both left and right wing. Yeah, he's been a striker. Right? He 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 can actually be a bit of a utility guy too. Obviously, at 19, mm -hmm. he'd be sort of looking to come in off the bench probably and like establish himself, mm -hmm. which is fine. Um, I think between him and Hasse, it'd be fun to have two young guys that could theoretically grow up together on, on the flanks opposite each other, right? Like, if everything panned out, yeah. if not, whatever, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I think we've pretty much already covered Striker, haven't we? Because that's where we started. <laughs> when yeah, we talked exactly. about all of our... Yeah. So we're covered. We're just about covered. Any other thoughts about, like, the off-season? You know, any... Like, do you know... Are they scheduling friendly soon? We, we already have, I guess, here's some fun news for, for listeners. Um, the jersey, our, our, our kits are being released June 30th, quite early this year. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I was hoping that that meant that they were going to pull in all their transfers real quick. They already knew who they had, right? So they're just doing some good PR work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm less confident now, <laughs> but we're, you know, crossing our fingers. Um, any, any thoughts on any of it? You know, anything going into the summer? Um, uh, honestly, uh, all I, like, uh, it's really hard to predict what's going to happen, like, we have to sign so many players this year, because we've had, like, many leaving, yeah. uh, so we have to see and, like, uh, wait, uh, I really don't know, man, like, 
I think like we we, we, we should be in the market for at least like 12 players. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of depth we have. We have no backup at the moment. Like all the players that we've mentioned already, they gotta play. But like, okay, who who the subs are gonna be? We really don't have, we have that many subs. Uh, yeah, hopefully not. Mehmet and like, well. like, <laughs> Actually, like this season, like we like, given the fact that we got like finessed by the injuries, like we should be definitely more prepared in case uh, <laughs> something similar happens uh, next season as well. So I think like we have I mean, a really, that's the really one strength of Ismail's like fitness yeah. fitness plan, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. We have a big summer coming up uh, again. Like this, we'll pretty much lay the foundations of what's gonna happen in the next four to five years. So it's kind of a big deal. Yeah. It is kind of a big deal. Uh, and then uh, like like we mentioned earlier, I think I'm like uh, hopeful about what, what's gonna happen the next season. Because like we already have a promising tactic, a manager who wants to succeed, and if we can like kind of combine those with a good transfer window, I think I think we'll do quite well next season. Yeah, no, I I'm I'm in full agreement. I I feel like um, we actually even have another benefit here in that Fenerbahce has just brought in Jorge Jesus, which you know. Even if he's like a better manager than Zalahan Ismail, which I don't honestly believe. I think he's sort of in the older, out, more outdated mode, personally. He uh, <laughs> is definitely going to have to adjust to Turkey, right? He's going to have to adjust oh, to the yeah. league, to the way everything goes, right? So they've kind of shot themselves in the foot. It's a, a make or break moment. He can flop really badly or he will like... And look at yeah. big name managers in the past. Like Del Bosque and... Yeah. Right? Like, they've not... It right? Card, right? No, it hasn't. It hasn't. Only like the, so, the only exception to that rule would could be Galatasaray with Mancini. Uh, at least in the yeah. like recent era, you know, like uh, as far as I can remember, I don't really remember any team bringing in a, like a big name as a manager in recent no, years. Oh yeah, but there's still, certainly way you can think easily of all the cases that that failed miserably. So uh -huh. um, that gives me hope and then also glad today with Dominic Torrent it, it, it seems like he's definitely on his way out mm -hmm. you know obviously they could always bring Patti Tedem back which like is always a possibility but in all likelihood they're also they're also gonna have a guy who is adjusting to the, to the league freshly um, and in fact he'll have even less time to be settled because they haven't even picked mm -hmm. who that's gonna be yet right they're waiting for their election mm -hmm. why are they taking so long do you have any idea what's going on over there? Um, uh, honestly, I have no idea, man. I wasn't able to follow Galatasaray, especially in the uh, in the last few weeks. I was really <laughs> busy with other stuff, so to say. Boats and whatnot. No. But yeah, like, I, I'm curious because, uh, you know, they've signaled that... I don't that... know the details about that. I mean, that, that's what I'm getting at, basically. Yeah. Um, all I've heard is that they're new. Whenever someone comes in and it's very likely to be a new president, mm -hmm. um, they're going to want to... Uh, Sort of re restart, right? Like mm -hmm. to bring in their new, their own coach with their own system and their own mm -hmm. transfers and all that. Um, so it's it's surprising that they haven't already gotten that project underway. Mm -hmm. um, but so all of, anyway, the point I guess is that I have great hope how this relates to us, right? The, the other arrivals are going to be figuring things out in a way that I think Valerian Ismail. This is the big benefit of him having not too long, but long enough. Like, he hasn't been able to ruin his reputation because of our fickle fans, but he has been long <laughs> enough, you know, like Toant, but he has been here long enough to understand how things are going in Turkey a little bit, to see guys on the pitch playing, you know, mm -hmm. to know a few pieces of what he has going forward, right? Like, Emirhan is a huge one. But, you know, also a few guys on the back line, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, I feel like we have some advantages. You know, Trabzon is another question, but... I don't see that as like a dynasty. I mean, it could happen. Okay, for now we treat here. You might get brigaded yeah. by the travel forum. Jakub is gonna step in. Yeah. Lay down the law. He's actually listening right now. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, man. I don't know. I think I think that about covers it. You have any parting words for our listeners? Well, not really, man. It was it was. It was really uh, fun to talk to you 
uh, talk with you about the season, the miserable season we have we've had. Uh, it was like really fun to talk about like what should we expect? Expect uh, at the time at the time of the day, I'm like extremely exhausted right now. I can't even like speak properly. I apologize for that. <laughs> uh, I just cracked open a beer, so I'm yeah, gonna be like, there. Like, yeah, this is what happens after you work for like ten hours in a day, yep. and it's like almost like two a.m. Uh, it's one. Oh, what, it's, what, also, what, it's one a.m. But still, like, it's quite late for me. I'm usually. Uh, I've, I've, I've uh, kept you up. I've kept you up. This yeah. is a long one too. It's All fine. Right. So, well, well, yeah, it was like uh, super fun to do this anyway. Like talk uh, about our season and like what to expect and like what to expect from the biggies and everything so i really enjoyed it man like thanks for having me still and always 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 and we'll see you soon maybe right like uh... yeah hopefully man like next year maybe like we, we, we might do some big stuff on the podcast i have some like uh not i, I don't want to say plans because like i've never really actually like sit and like sat through it and like plan it anything <laughs> but like i have some like ideas let's say uh, ideas uh, which i would love to explore so just stay tuned in to the podcast troops. yeah yeah some maybe some, some might, great guest some speakers big stuff coming up next year yeah hopefully 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 we'll see not spoil anything but we'll yeah see. exactly but um dude it's always a pleasure to have you on it's always great to have another voice out here um and you know i mean i think Cheers, man. I appreciate it's, that. A, it's a momentous occasion right it's not just another end of a season right i think it's as you mentioned it's the beginning of a new era right like we're really now building the foundation for what we hope to achieve going forward <laughs> and yeah I, last i'll leave this as our parting point for the for the episode you mentioned our, yourself when we were starting the good full circle moment but um you know that our hopes are kind of what hurt us the most right because we had so much hope and perhaps mm-hmm, it's important mm-hmm. to remember that like last season was supposed to be a throwaway year last season was a rebuild that just miraculously like everything fell into place abubakar was smashing in gold rosier turned out was actually a phenomenal pickup rashid gazal was a phenomenon and he still was this year i think he was robbed by poor f- efforts up front which i won't harp on but um yeah <laughs> you know um but <laughs> So we really exceeded expectations last year. So realistically, there should have been some kind of a correction, right? Uh, you you, you yeah. couldn't have expected Trabzon being good, or, or I mean, especially in a year when all of our rivals were really terrible for the most part. I mean, Fener picked it up late, but I mean, we, we could have done much better. There's no doubt about that. But at the same time, I think this was a correction on us exceeding expectations the year before. And so in a way, I think we're actually, maybe we've been brought down to earth in a positive sense. We can look at next season the way we probably should have viewed this season as a launch pad, right? Like we're kind of, we're, we're moving in a good direction still. And we've actually fixed our finances, right? Um, Ahmed Nurchebi announced today they had our tax fees reduced considerably, right? The, you know, we've, we've cut, um, expenses we've cut player salaries we've, we've done a lot of positive things one Ahmed Nurchebi negotiates heavily all the time right that's a problem his people have but in a sense that's what we need uh, as far as financial stewardship goes so like there are a lot of positives yeah. we have to look forward to we're moving in the right direction we have a system we have a guy who's you know emotional and, and wants to build us so let's leave it there folks follow us on Twitter follow my friend Aaron over here at Aaron E. Armstrong. Bingo. Follow myself at Sir underscore writes underscore a lot. Follow the podcast at Eagles underscore podcast. Um, you know, we'll be back next week as per always. And of course, let's go, go Bashing Toss! Let's go! <laughs> Peace out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you for coming by.
Besiktas International hopes you enjoyed this program.